evening, everybody. This is Dan Craven in a little bit different venue tonight. Instead of doing a good sports show, I am here representing the Meadville Area Free Clinic. And boy, do we have a good show for you tonight. We are going to be talking a little bit about the Meadville Area Free Clinic and an upcoming event that they have planned that is really going to be a blockbuster a type of an event. And I'm going to introduce you right And with me tonight in my left is uh, Diane Craven. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. You're a, And Diane, you are the... You're the manager of the Meadville Area Free Clinic. Isn't yes, sir. Right? Okay, and to my right is uh, Bev Kennedy. Bev, welcome. Thank you. And Bev is the president of the board of directors of the Meadville Area Free Clinic. And what we're going to do before we get started into the big event, so stay tuned, is we're going to start with you, Diane. I just want you to kind of give a little general background about what the clinic's about, your job re responsibilities, and that type of thing. Please. Okay, well, the free clinic has been around for 27 years. We're a nonprofit organization that serves the uninsured adults in the Crawford County area that do not have health insurance. Adults meaning people between the ages of 18 and 64 that do not have health insurance that live in the Crawford County area. Very good. And where, uh, where, is, the, where is it located? We're at 505 Poplar Street on the second floor of that professional arts building that's behind the Grove Street Hospital. Okay, very good. And you were saying you're a nonprofit, but how does how does the free clinic generally, or how do you acquire funds to manage your operation? We get our funds basically through donations, through the grants that we write, um, through the generous uh, community and support um, through the uh, United Way. We are supported through the United Way. We've been supported through United Way for the past 27 years. Um, all of the, uh, we do not get any government funding whatsoever. So it's really through the grants that we write and the, through the generous donations of the community of Meadville. Okay. And you have a pretty big staff. I mean, but is it that they're staff paying or they volunteer or how does that work? All of our I am the only paid part-time staff person, um, and then we have a part-time person that we just hired for 12 hours a week um, for a clerical staff person. Um, everybody's a volunteer. We have uh, right now four um, physicians that come in totally volunteer and have clinics for our patients, and then we have um, two volunteer pharmacists that come in and meet with um, a diabetic clinic that we have, which Dr. Kennedy is a, also not only a pharmacist that works with um, our prescription program that we have, but she also is a diabetic educator. I'll let her talk about that a little bit later. But um, we also have Dr. Uh, Wishart that works with the hypertension clinic. And then we also have um, all of our nurses and LPNs our volunteers, and then we also have three volunteer physical therapists, so we also, also offer physical therapy services. Okay. In addition to all of that, we run a program that is called Pass It On for medical durable supplies. And we have several volunteer people that um, we collect, donated walkers, wheelchairs, rollators, crutches, um, and also incontinency supplies that are new, of course. And um, those we sanitize and clean the wheelchairs and walkers and rollators. And then we are giving those out as donations to people that need them, that their insurance does not cover them. Um, those items, they cannot purchase them or they cannot purchase them um, through their financial situations. Very good. That's very busy. Dr. Kennedy, excuse me. I didn't... Uh... I oh, didn't give you your, no, your doom, the doom yes, dirt. Okay. So talk to me. You're president of the board. That's a, that must be an interesting position. Obviously, it's good that the free clinic has a board. So so talk to me about some of the responsibility of the board and what the board does in conjunction to help the free clinic function. Well, the board meets quarterly, um, and we're f um, a bunch of volunteer members that we meet and volunteer our time with the clinic. Um, we're from a very, very background of people. We have a CPA on our board. We have 
um, a retired nurse. We have Dr. Kraling from the Mebo Medical Center, our, who's the medical director. He's on our board. Um, we have an insurance navigator on our board from the Penny Program. We have a social worker. We have Dr. Miles, who is one of our volunteer physicians and medical director. Um, we have members of the community on our, um, we have a minister. So we have a, a very variety of people who make decisions and try to, you know, make the funds and so forth go in, in a, an appropriate way for the free clinic. Yeah. So, you know, all these different walks of life, you know, it's kind of putting a, putting a salad together, you know, it, uh, the more stuff you put in there, the better it tastes, so to speak. Everyone has different opinions, and it, it makes interesting meetings because they all come. They're not all medical backgrounds and right. so forth. So it's yeah, it's it's a good way to run our free clinic. Now, Diane mentioned briefly that you know you're you're more than just you know the board uh, president. You probably do some other things, but what are some of the other responsibilities that that you do uh, at the clinic? Um, well. Being the president of the board, I guess that sort of me makes me Diane's boss. <laughs> so um, Diane runs things through me sometimes um, for the clinic business, um, some decisions that need made and so forth. Um, and then I also volunteer my time. That's how I started out as a volunteer at the free clinic um, when they had medications started. Um, they needed somebody to organize the medications they were just sitting in a box and so I took the time to organize the medications and come up with a system for um, the patients to be able to get to those medications because they were coming from the manufacturers and manufacturing bottles so we need to get them needed to get them so that the patients could use them so you know developing a label system and and so forth and a way for the physicians to be able to dispense the medications so I helped that out. And these are more like, I'd say, life-sustaining medications, but medications, for example, what would be some of the medications that you want to The big majority of our medications are for chronic illnesses, um, hypertension, um, diabetes. Um, we, do, we dispense, um, we have medications for heart conditions, um, thyroid conditions. And so um, a lot of those medications would cost people hundreds of dollars at their pharmacy and as a patient of the free clinic um we're able to provide these medications at no cost to them yeah so okay very good so you could put this all together you can see all this all the responsibilities that are everything that's going through this free clinic and being a nonprofit, one one and a half paid uh staff members this this takes a lot of funding all right i mean this takes a lot of money to, to pull this off and diana you mentioned you know, you get, uh, you know, you're getting donations and uh, you're uh, writing grants for people. Is that how this works as well? Constantly. We're constantly looking for grants that we are eligible for and we're constantly writing grants. Um, because we're not a pharmacy, we're considered a physician dispensary. Um, and if it weren't for this program that we uh, joined, it's called Dispensary of Hope out of Nashville, um, we get because they go out to the manufacturers and get prescriptions. Um, we also a, have a partner with a local pharmacy here in town where they give us prescriptions at their cost so we can afford to give through our grant money and through our donations, we're able to give our patients prescriptions. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do this. We spend between 800 um to a thousand dollars a month on prescriptions for our patients um so it's a large bulk of our budget money is our prescriptions um, and medications for our patients and these people would go without their medications and their illnesses would not be you know under control if they didn't have their medications so i mean that the medications is as a pharmacist is a very important part um, of chronic illnesses and these patients that have no insurance. So, you know, making sure that they're compliant with their medications right. is in a, such an important part. They got to keep on schedule. It's like brushing your teeth. You know, you skip a time, yeah. you go see the dentist and you end up with a cavity. And of course, we're talking about a large scale when you're talking about diabetes and hypertension and, and, and maybe people with cholesterol and so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay, I was going to bring up the point is, is that so 
the emphasis is on free. Okay, so here's an example. I got a job. I just work in a channel lock. I, I don't have any insurance, but I'm working and I have a paycheck. Do I apply to the free clinic if I fit? I'm 35 years old. I'm fit between parameters. I have a job, so I'm getting paid, but do I still fit into your parameters? Yes, sir, you would. Um, most... If you have a new job, most of your benefits usually don't start right at your first day of your first job. So that's where the free clinic can step in and you would fit all of the parameters. All you have to do is have no, no insurance, live in the Crawford County area and between 18 and 64. So we can help those people that are waiting for their benefits to start in their new job. Um, and that's where a lot of our patients fit into those parameters. Um, and many of our, to tell you the truth, majority of our patients are working patients. They are either fitting into the scenario that you're talking about, or they cannot afford the insurance that is offered to them from their employer, or they're working two or three part-time jobs that their employer doesn't offer the that insurance benefits that is is available to them that they just can't afford it. Yes, um, okay. So sometimes we see patients just one drive because it's the the you know because they'll get benefits in that in the next three months in the ninety days. So we'll see them or sometimes our physicians will even do um, pre employment physicals. So we'll we'll see patients um, and just do the the employment physicals for them. Sometimes, um, you know, and we also help them transition into, if they do get insurance, we help transition into having them have a primary care physician with their insurance. So we won't just drop them because they have insurance all of a sudden. Um, sometimes it takes several months to get in to see a physician. So we will continue that care of that patient until they're seen by the new physician with their insurance. Very good. And and, and just to kind of wrap things up, and we'll go on to our next segment here, but I would assume that you're in partnership with some of the other organizations in the Crawford County and Meville area. So if someone comes in and it sort of fits your bill or it doesn't, so it's not like, yeah, we can't help you, you're sort of referring them to somebody else. Exactly, or many patients are actually being referred to us, um, whether it's the social workers at the hospital or whether it's um, we're in partnership with many of the social agencies right here in Crawford County, and they know to refer patients to us and vice versa. Uh, we're in partnership with family planning, we're in partnership with CHAPS, we're in partnership with many of the organizations. It's definitely, definitely um, taking a village to help care for all of those in the area. It surely is. Okay, well, before we go to the next thing, we're gonna hold this sign up for me, Di. So this kind of, I think this kind of puts everything in a nutshell. It gets the number at the bottom, I believe. And I think it also, it says here, you need to make an appointment, right? Di, that's important. Right. We're not a walk-in service um, because we do rely upon the volunteer physician schedules. Uh, we do ask people to call us to make an appointment. Um, so those services are by appointment all age. We do have administrative office hours. Um, we are closed always on Monday. But we are open administratively Tuesday and Wednesday, 9 to 4, and Thursday and Friday from 9 to 12 noon. And the Pass It On program, right now we have limited hours for the Pass It On, but if you call that number, 814-333-3932, we can always set up an appointment. And if you need crutches, wheelchair, walkers, rollators, we will set up an appointment and we will meet you and uh, so that you can get those type of medical durable supplies that you need. Very good. So you can see there's a lot of stuff going on at Poplar Street. And a lot of stuff takes a lot of funding and then a lot of, there's different ways of funding. And, when, and so we're not trying to be finite. So because of the board and Diane and all their interests, we're like, okay, how do we raise more money? I'm gonna let you hold that up, Dr. Kennedy. We've got, the, we've got this big event coming up. It's the, it's the, the food, the 2024 Food Fest. So, um, Diane, we'll just start with you real quick. Tell me the four W's. What, where, when, and why? Well, we've never really had to raise money before, but as everyone knows, money has um, gotten tight um, over the recent years since COVID, um, and since every, everything has just gotten economically shorter. Um, so 
we have gone to had to go out and raise more funds. So we have taken over a huge event. Um, it's called a food fest. Um, it is a food truck event. We are having it, um, as you can see, on June 15th. It starts at 11 o'clock and commences at 7. It's going to be at the Crawford County Fairgrounds. You can enter at Gate 3. There is going to be also a craft festival at the same time frame right beside us. Um, there are going to be over 40 crafters. We have 14 food trucks that are going to be coming. There is going to be the Bel Airs. Um, out of Pittsburgh, sharing their musical talents with us. I believe they're starting at 3 o'clock um, and going until 5. Um, we are just very excited about all the sponsors that we have had um, get, coming forward and sponsoring this event. Um, there's going to be children's activities going to be happening. 50-50s. Um, 50-50s. It's going to be auctions. Chinese auctions, um, gift baskets. It's going to be a wonderful day. It's the same weekend as the Thurston Classic, so you can go out in the morning and watch the balloons go off and then come over and partake with some of the wonderful food trucks that are going to be there and also enjoy the crafts. It's also going to be the Sojourners going down French Creek that weekend. Um, there's going to be a softball tournament down the road at the softball um uh, yeah, to the, 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 at the complex there for the softball games. Um, there's going to be a lot of things happening that Father's Day weekend, but it's on Saturday, the 15th of June from 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock. Excellent. Now, remember, we're in Crawford County, and we're at the Crawford County Fairgrounds, Dr. Kennedy. And what means we're in Crawford County? Rain or shine? Are we on? We are. Is there going to be a whole, is there going to be a whole day? Hey, we're on. We are on. Rain rain or it's on. Rain or shine. It's on the day. The crafters are on. Rain or shine. The day. We, I mean. Put it out there. We, Just put it out there. It, it's underneath in the in the 4-H barn. So we are going to be underneath shelter. All right. It's that dairy barn is huge. We are going to have a good time. There's going to be plenty of room for our people to sit and talk and gather. Um, It's just, I'm, it's going to be a nice community event, day thing, but, you know, just come out and let me ask you this if you can let the cat out of the bag i don't know you know i know there's there's company secrets can you give us a little tip on what type of food trucks would be there do you have an idea do you guys do you know oh, but there's, uh, there's a big variety i think they're all 14 trucks are different we didn't okay. have, um, we have there's barbecue a, we have some things there's going to be amish donuts there's going to be sarah's pretzels bob grasso's um Specialty donuts. There's going to be wood fire pizza, hamburgers, hot dogs, oh, uh, so ice cream, homemade ice cream, homemade apple dumplings. It just yeah. I, if you all kinds of stuff. Good so you need to come out and see. Okay, let me ask. Either one of you can answer this one. I'm in my car. I'm driving up Route 77. I'm turning on to Leslie. I get to Gate C. What do I expect? A Am I going to have to pay admission to get in? A, no. B. No. The, no. B. Watch the trap. What's the flow pattern? When I get into gate C. Gate three. Gate three. Gate three. Gate three. It's going to be a one way. We're, we have it organized. But ask. Show me how it works. We have so many volunteers to direct the traffic and direct the on parking. We're going to have parking going one direction and exiting one what gate four or gate five on what is that hamilton hamilton, hamilton road on um, the crafters are going to be up in the area where the rides are usually so they're going to be a little bit of a distance but not a huge diff, diff distance but um you know we're all going to be connected um it's just it's going to be pretty odd so anything you need the money for is to buy your food at the at the uh, and actually we're not making uh, the money that we're making that day is off of the 50-50 at the Chinese auction gift basket raffles. Um, the food vendors have already paid their fee. Um, we're not making a percentage of the food um, from the food. So we are, we're just or orchestrating all of this together for a nice community day. 
And there was activity, you said activities for kids of all, people of all ages. Right, there'll be face painting and, and other activities for the children. Yes. All kinds of good stuff going on there. And you said, because it's underneath that big barn. Right, the full age barn. Yeah, so that's going to be a pretty cool thing. Okay, so if if somebody has any questions, like, you know, I saw this show on TV, and I got some questions about more about the event. Who do they call? Where do they call? What number do they call? Who do they get a hold of? They can call the free clinic at 814-333-3932. Okay, and they should be specific on what they're at. So here I am, you know, I'm sitting uh, somewhere, and I have nothing to do. Oh, I've been busy all summer except June 15th, and I want to volunteer. Do you guys still need help, or do you guys got to We would love volunteers. If somebody wants to volunteer, they could call in. Yeah. So if you want to volunteer for a good event, you know, you could call in. You know, and, and I'm sure they'll put you put you to work here at the. At the if, if there's students that need volunteer um, community service hours, they can contact the the free clinic. Um, we're always looking for volunteer nurses, um, office in, in, and office staff to help us out um, in the office. You know, um, it, we have a lot of work that needs to be done, and it's just. There might be some garbage to carry away at the food fest here. No, but <laughs> tables to wipe down. Tables to wipe down, all that other stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, very good. What else are I going to ask you? I'm going to ask you something really, really pertinent here. We talked about the food here. Similar. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have, has there been a similar event of this in the past, a yes. food truck type of thing? Yes, up okay. at Vernon. Up at the Vernon. Mm -hmm. And, of course, yeah, everybody went by Vernon, and that's turning into a... A new right. store, and it, so the traffic flow. So this is why you're having it at the Crossford County Fair. Right? right. And they've been pretty hospitable, we would say. Yes. Okay, that's a good thing. So so this is similar, because I remember there was a lot of people turning out. That was a big turnout. Right. There was too. over 3,000 people at that first event at the Vernon Place. So, I mean, we're hoping to see that many people plus right at this event and it was open and a little bit windy for live it was very and windy that day I'm yeah and i think scared, this yeah. is going to be a little little tighter into the, all right what am i what am i forgetting this is the big event right this is one of your big events you know for the year here is this food fest and that's what we're trying to promote and the purpose for all the beginning was to is so that we need the the beaver area free clinic needs this money so we can help the people and in, in the community we are we forgetting anything about the event itself? Did I forget anything? Do we need to add anything? We should take our sponsors. Well, that's the end. Oh, yes, that's the I'm not there sponsors. yet. That's okay. on the wrap up section. Okay. I'll tell you what, they're going to take a job, yes. <laughs> our, I, our, 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 I, I am just always we just, can I'm that amazed now. by our community and, and the help. I mean, we can, whenever we need something at the free clinic, it seems to happen. Somebody provides for us. And, uh, and the, I know is. A representative of the board, I we are so thankful. I just and it's amazing that the 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 community can come together. Whether it's a partnership with the hospital or you know so, you know something that we need and the hospital provides it, or the foundations or the churches that in the community, it, it's just totally amazes me that it just seems that we get what we need for our patients that need. That's your ghost. It, yeah, it, just, it gives me. It gives, it gives you goose. I can tell you're getting a little shook up there. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I've. Done, That's a good thing, though. You're right. I, you're I'm, right. I've been a part of this group now for seven years, and it just totally every. I just, I just come back, and it just totally amazes me, as a professional, that the people that we that that we help appreciate that i'm so grateful and so thankful. and it just i mean it just gives me a good feeling this is why i became a pharmacist this is why i'm in healthcare. it's just that we're helping people who need need the help and very do you have a final shout out shout out and then we can do some yeah talk about some other stuff just in general no okay so recognition style i'll let you get on that i know there's some recognitions there's some people you need to recognize or However you want to handle all that. Well, we would just like to thank our sponsors. Sure. Do you want me to just... Uh, that's absolutely perfect. Active Aging Foundation, the Armstrong Group, Associated Contractors, Better View Window Cleaning, Crawford County Convention and Visitors Bureau, EQH Advisors, Dr. Data Spinton, the Gelday Group, Hagen Business Machines, Marquette Savings Bank, Meadville Elks Lodge, number 219, Meadville Medical Center, 
Northwest REC, Watson Pepicelli PC, Westbury United Methodist Retirement Community. And I think there are a few others that have come in most recently that haven't been listed on the posters at this when these were actually produced. Exactly. There's many more sponsors. And our and our we have a Facebook page for the Food Fast. Thank you. And yeah. all of our sponsors are listed on that. Um if you go down through on all of our sponsors on that Facebook page, it's what the under the twenty twenty four Food Fest, I think is what the Facebook page is. Very good. And there's a there's a couple banners flying around the mm -hmm. flying around. one right now up at uh Flixed T V. Oh, I was good. I you know you let the one kid out of the bag, but we got how many weeks left before? I haven't even counted. I think there's three or four. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's... I was going to say, if, if, if you come to the Food Fest and you can tell us one of the locations where the banner is, oh, okay. we, you might get, you might get, I don't know, you might get something free. There might be a little... So you should be, it's kind of like a little scavenger hunt. Where is that food? Oh, thing in it? Okay. We'll figure out what we're going to figure out, but be on the lookout. Flix is off the chart, but there's going to be some other places where we're going to put the banner. So if you come to the Food Fest and you report to either Miss Diane Craven or Dr. Kennedy where that location is and you're correct, there might be something special in there for them. We'll let you know what that is when you get there. How's that? And we, uh, you, so you heard what Diane talked about, all these different sponsors. And but to Bev's point, this community just gives and gives and gives. And so I'm with you. I think it's just a great place to be. Uh, I think we hit all, the, uh, hit all the nuts and bolts and we don't want to, you know, just kind of drive it in the end, but we want to thank Kevin and Armstrong, obviously, for giving us this, this opportunity. And I guess if, if there's nothing else to say, we can, can wrap it up because good, Danny, final thoughts. All right, with that, Dan Craven for Diane Craven and Dr. Beth Kennedy for the Meteor Area Free Clinic. Good night, everybody.